Now let's get into some more details of how to do a, a hypothesis test for the difference between two uh, means from independent samples, two independent samples, non-paired data. So it's called the independent samples t-test. That's the most common name. All these things have multiple names, which makes everything confusing, but the most common is independent samples t-test. Some people just say independent t. So we're looking right now at two means from independent groups. There's only really one option here. It's the independent samples t-test, because we're not going to do z for this. Nobody, oh, <laughs> except I messed up my find and replace and that says T up there. Let's just pretend that didn't happen. Moving on. So we have this data set up, two independent groups of individuals, and each individual gets a raw score on a very similar or identical outcome measure, a dependent variable or something like that, response variable. It's a numeric variable. And you have two groups of scores and two groups of individuals. Each individual has one score. So the groups of scores correspond perfectly to groups of individuals. Now the groups do not have to be the same size. Actually some little, it, it, it's a slightly better situation if they're the same size, but don't worry, you can deal with different sizes. If they're radically different sizes, then maybe you have a problem, like one is 10 times bigger than the other. But if it's just like one is you know 50% bigger than the other, not a big deal. So let's look at this conceptual setup here. You have one group of individuals here, and you are thinking in your mind, alternative hypothesis, there's something different about these individuals uh, on this variable. This variable is different in this group of individuals. So I've, I've sampled from this popu population of individuals and when I get my sample uh, values, it's because I don't have nearly enough people here. There's like <laughs> I don't know, over a hundred values there and I only have like 10 people here. Anyway, use your imagination and imagine there's more. So when I get this sample of values here in my sample, then it's because they're from these individuals, and you can tell by the blue lines, are different kinds of people who have something different about these values. And then when I get my sample number two, it comes from a different population of, of the variable. The variable is different in this, in this type of case, or this type of individual. And I calculate my two sample means. I'm going to look at the difference of those and I'm going to say, wow, look at that big difference. I'm going to make a big deal about that difference between sample means. So my alternative hypothesis is that there are two populations, the dashed gray lines here, and therefore two sampling distributions of possible means. Each, each sampling distribution of the mean has the same sample size as, as one of the samples. So this sampling distribution of the means, all the means that were used to create from this population to create this blue sampling distribution of means had the same sample size as this one here. And the same thing here, this uh, distribution of means, all these means have the same sample size as this distribution down here. So just a reminder, that's what the sampling distribution of means is. So this is the alternative hypothesis, that the means are different in the population. And that therefore, from population one came the blue population or sample one scores, just kind of like different way of saying this here with different ridiculous Excel graphics, I mean PowerPoint graphics, and population two, the reason we have these sample values here is because they came from this totally different population. So that's the alternative hypothesis view of the world. The null hypothesis, of course, has a different view of the world. So the null hypothesis says that the two samples are not from different populations at all, they're from the same population. Another way to say that mathematically is just that the populations have the same mean doesn't matter where that mean is, but the mean is the same. It can be a very high mean, and they both have the same high mean, a very low value mean, but the mean is the same. So the dashed line is the dashed lines of the populations, which are the same, and this is the sampling distribution of means, which is the same. It's two identical populations, which is the same as saying it's the same population. And so this wasn't two groups of individuals at all. It was one group of individuals from just one population, and they just happened to give you these different values. So the null hypothesis says that there isn't anything different happening, that whatever you're doing with your conditions, you're not sampling from two separate populations, you're sampling from one population. And all the values come from that one population. And it just looks like there are differences, but there totally are not real differences in the population. There are differences in your sample, sure, but that's just because of random sampling, according to the null hypothesis. And so if the null hypothesis is true, then the distribution of all possible means between sample 1 and sample 2 is normally distributed, or relatively normal, more normal if it's, you know, higher sample size and if there wasn't much skew in these original uh, dashed populations here. So it's normally distributed and the mean is zero because if these two means are the same, 
then the average difference between sample means, sampled from here and sampled from here, and the difference, the average difference after you calculate it between sample means from this population, well, you're just randomly sampling two samples and then calculating the mean from the same population, right? So the average difference is zero. The null hypothesis says that that is zero. The shape of this is normal, or t, really. Well, it's normal, but we have to use t to estimate it. And the standard deviation is what we call the standard error of the difference. I'm repeating things, but this is complicated, so keep watching it, keep listening to my boring repetitions and think about them. We're going to calculate the difference between our two sample means. And then we have these sample means and our difference between sample means. So all these differences and our difference. We have one thing and a sampling distribution of that thing. Now we can do a direct comparison. So our one thing here is our sampling, or our, our difference between our two means, sample one minus sample two. And we just see where that fits. Now it fits on the left here because, again, in this example, I keep using the same one. I have a sample one that has a lower mean than sample two does. So if one minus two, then you have a negative value for the difference, and therefore it should be the left of the mean in the sampling distribution of differences because that mean is zero. All the values to the left are negative, all the values to the right are positive. So let's practice a little bit, <coughs> and hopefully you'll see some details in how we conceptualize this. There's about, I don't know, half a dozen of these with different variations. It's going to take a few minutes. So in this situation, the null hypothesis says that there are two sampling distributions of raw scores, or two distributions of raw scores, sampling distributions of the mean, they're the same. And so our sample means, they just accidentally came, I, I ran these lines up into here to show you that these means came from the sampling distribution of means, and we just happened to get a very rare mean here and a rare mean here, a somewhat rare mean here, and that's just what happened here in this situation. The null hypothesis is true, and the, and the alternative hypothesis says that they're not, that these two means should be not, not be the same. And in our sample, we actually find that sample mean 1 is lower than sample mean 2. Blue is lower than red here. And so our sample mean difference, let's see if I got these right, a small sample mean 1, I made it a small font because it's to the left on the number line, so it's a small number, and mean 2 is larger there. That fits to the left because 1 minus 2, a small minus a big, is going to be a negative value, and so our t observed is going to be on the left-hand side of the sampling distribution of all possible differences between means. Our difference between means is much more negative or lower. So in this situation, imagine that the null hypothesis is false. Well, as you probably can guess, it doesn't change anything except where we think our means came from. I don't know. I put the means here of the populations. This is still pretty rare, and this is pretty expected from this distribution of all possible means. This is kind of a rare outcome. It should be even further to the right. Anyway, the null hypothesis is false. It doesn't matter. The distribution according to the null hypothesis is the same. Our sample mean difference is the same. Our t value is going to be the same. So my animations are getting ahead of themselves here. Here's another situation. In this case, sample mean 1 is bigger than sample mean 2. Blue is to the right of red. The null hypothesis says they came from the same distribution. And the t observed is a positive t observed because um, if you're doing 1 minus 2, uh, sorry, sample mean 1 is bigger than 2. If you're doing 1 minus 2, 1 is a bigger number, blue is a bigger number, 2 is, is red, it's a smaller number, then you have a positive difference between means. So your t observed will be positive. I just kind of estimated where it might be in the distribution. Uh, mostly just pay attention to whether it's to the right or the left so you can kind of get a sense of this. In this case, Blue is once again bigger, but maybe not quite as big. Oh, wait, wait, so this is supposed to be the same situation, just the null hypothesis is false. It doesn't matter. Everything's the same. The only thing that's different is that we think something different is happening. But the null hypothesis still says the same thing. Our difference in our sample is still the same thing. So here's a situation where blue is a lot bigger than red. So sample mean 1 is a lot bigger than sample mean 2. If the null hypothesis is true, then actually it doesn't matter. This is a very big positive number. We'll have a huge t observed, like 20 or something like that. We would firmly reject any and all null hypotheses. So if the null hypothesis is false, don't worry, we still have the same situation. We still have the same difference between sample means. We still have the same sampling distribution of the means according to the null hypothesis. We still have the same t observed. Yeah, there you go. Now here, if the null hypothesis is true, you have blue a lot lower than red. 
And so there's your T observed. Actually, didn't quite make it. It was supposed to go all the way down there. Bad animations. Anyway, it's far to the left. And here, if the null hypothesis is false, well, then our values are much easier to explain because they come from distributions that produce them much more predictably. But it doesn't matter. Our test will be the same. Our T observed will be the same. Everything will be the same here. So here, things are a little closer. Blue is still greater than red. One is still greater than two. So try and guess which side of the mean of distribution of disparate differences that would be on. There it is. So T observed is maybe not such a big thing. And same situation if the null hypothesis is false, still the same T observed, because it doesn't matter whether the null hypothesis is true or false, because we don't know. We're still going to make the same difference, or the same decision. And our sample is still going to tell us the same thing. So now red is bigger than blue, and they're both really high numbers. You know what? It doesn't matter how high the numbers are. It only matters what the difference between the numbers is. In a test of a difference between means, all that matters is the differences. In this case, even though the numbers themselves are high, the T observed is going to be not so huge and kind of negative, small, because um, 1 is less than 2, mean, mean 1 is lower than mean 2, so 1 minus 2 is a negative number, so compared to all other differences between means, it's more zero, more negative, left of zero than most of them. If the null hypothesis is false, same issue. Maybe there's not much of a difference between the means and the population, there's not a lot of power in that situation. But check this out. Do you know why this says wa? Because look, I'm messing with your head. Actually, I'm not, because you remember this from the first week we drilled this. Here, population 2 is lower than population 1. But here, sample 2 is higher than sample 1. So there's a reversal from the population to the sample. That can happen. That's random sampling for you. And so any of these things could be true, and it doesn't really matter what is true in the population. Anything can be true in the sample. There are things that are more and less likely to be true, but theoretically, given enough time in this infinite universe, any crazy thing could happen. So, the independent samples TLTS boils down to this. The sampling distribution of differences between means. Uh, the mean of that distribution is what we estimate to be the population mean difference between the two populations which is always zero. It's also the expected value of all possible sample, dif sample mean differences. We put our t-critical value or values, here's a two-tailed test. We put our t-observed, we reject or we don't reject. In this case, we would reject the null because our t-observed is in the rejection region. It's the same as a z-test, the same as a one-sample t-test. <coughs> the setup and what we're imagining gets different. The cal calculations get slightly more, dif more difficult, but otherwise it's the same. Our observed value, here we go. Actually, you know what, I think I'm going to stop this. I'm going to end this video here, let you do some pondering, and I'll make another video of the rest of this lecture.